Hey, I'm Colin Constable from AdSign, and today I'm going to give you a run through of uh, Load Quartz software and how to use it. So, I've got here a, uh, a few machines here in the Oracle Cloud. Uh, I've got a Windows machine here, and you can uh, see I've, it's got a public IP address, a couple of Linux machines, both uh, with public IP addresses. And if I wanted to connect to them, then uh, with Windows, I use RDP. A remote desktop protocol, and with these uh, Linux machines, I'll use SSH. And uh, let's show you the RDP first. Um, so with the RDP client that I've got running on my desktop, uh, let's get that one running here. I can make a connection to this IP address, 159.33.47. And here it is here. And I can click RDP. And there we go. I've got access to that Windows machine, and I can work on it. That's just fine. Um, the problem with that is that I can work on it, but also, if you think about the networking side of this, uh, it has to have an IP address. We've seen that, but it also has to have a, a port open. So let's look at the log out of here and look and see what ports are open. So if we go to uh, the networks, virtual networks, we'll see uh, the uh, VCN, virtual network, and the subnet. And then we'll see the uh, security lists, or ACLs. And um, here you can see the default security is for 3389, that's the RDP port, and 22 to allow from anywhere. So literally anywhere, uh, somebody can try and attack uh, both my SSH uh, and my RDP ports. Um, so that means yeah, it's it's not great. What would be ideal is if we could delete this. Let's just delete the RDP one. Let's remove that. And uh, now I've removed it, so I've removed my tax service. Nobody can attack it. Um, but of course, um, I can't get to it either. Uh, and that's where NoPorts comes in. NoPorts um, allows you to drop some software onto uh, the machine you're trying to get into, and as it connects. It allows you to uh, connect to that machine, uh, but uh, via local host on your machine. So it's local host to local host. So let's uh, let's see that working. Let me just get up the uh, software for that, and uh, we can show you it. So here's this, and you can see I've got uh, RDP this time, still Oracle RDP connecting to the same machine over RDP. Uh, but on a local host, 127.0.0.1 on port 9123. So let's connect to that. And there we go. We've connected to that machine. And yet there's no attack service on that machine. So uh, makes life way, way simpler if you are uh, got uh, RDP platforms out there. All you need to do is have the software running. I've got it running here in uh, in a shell. And um, that's it. You connect from your machine directly to that machine, just like you were normally, but via local host on your machine and local host on the on the machine that's running RDP. The same could be said for SSH. So let's just show you the SSH side of things. Close out of this. And we can get rid of the RDP client. And I'll bring down a, uh, a terminal window. So here we go. There's a terminal window. Oh, pretty large. Let's squeeze it up a little bit. And if we look on the uh, machines that I've got here, the compute machines, instances, we'll see a machine. So let's say this one. So let's uh, connect to this one. Normally, you would just uh, run an SSH to that. So let's see if we can do that. Sorry about that. And you have to specify your uh, uh, SSH keys to get logged in. So uh, 234151. Let's see. I think that's one. Yeah, 234151 is the machine. And I should just be able to correct directly to it. And uh, yep, connected in. That's great. Uh, but of course, I've got port 22 open on that. Um, not ideal, right? So let's see if we can get rid of that port 22. Go back into 
networking side of things. Web to cloud. So there's the there's the uh, security list or the ACLs, and uh, all we got less than twenty two. So this would be a perfect firewall. Once we've gotten rid of this, so let's remove that. Now there's no attack services on my cloud, um, but it'd be great if I could get into that machine. So I can use that with a command line tool that we have. Um, let's log out of this one, and obviously you now now if I tried to run the same command again, I wouldn't be able to log in because I've closed out port 22. So that's also prevented all the bad actors to get into it as well. So let's see if we can log into that as well. And uh, I don't seem to have it in my, that's SSH NP uh, minus F. In fact, all of that stuff's correct. We just need to put in the uh, OCI SSH NP1, which is the name of the machine, and hit return. So the name of the machine would just go back to the instances. There's the instances, and we're logging into this machine here. And uh, we are now logged in, and we do an IPA. And here you can see the interface so this is the internal interface inside the cloud and it's on 31 and you can see there's 31 so we're definitely on the on the right machine uh, but we've got no attack service to that machine so if you're worried about having uh, ssh or rdp or in fact any tcp uh, protocol open at all to the internet and you just want to close all that stuff down make your life easier then uh, ssh no ports is uh, definitely the the program suite for you. Um, so the question's probably on uh, on your minds at the moment is, well, okay, Colin, how, how does this work? And uh, do I have to trust you and all the rest of it? So uh, let me run you through quickly how that works. And uh, then I'll show you how you can try it for yourself. So let's just start at the beginning, uh, which is up here. So the way that we uh, have this working is uh, we've created a new uh, internet protocol. We call it the app protocol. And on that protocol, it uh, uses at signs as the address. So we are using TCP underneath the skin, uh, but we've got a uh, an overlaid network protocol on top of TCP and TLS uh, called the app protocol. The way that works is uh, you have uh, you use these unique um, strings for uh, addresses. So mine's at Colin. Another one of mine is uh, at C constab. And I create, as I get that given that at sign, uh, I get to create my own cryptographic keys. And uh, as I create those cryptographic keys, I use those keys to authenticate to a bit of infrastructure on the internet. We call that an at server. Each at sign, so like at Colin or at C constab, has its own individual at server. And that is a point of presence on the internet for each of these ad signs. You'll notice there's an outbound connection to the ad server. The ad server itself uh, is, has a dedicated DNS name and a port number, and those are all held in a directory. So if I want to find my ad server, then I speak to the directory and say, where's at Collins ad server? And it will return me a DNS address and a port number. And then I've authenticated it here, and uh, yeah, C constant authenticates it here. Once we've authenticated to our ad servers, our ad servers can pass um, information back and support, just like very fast IN. So um, let's show you that in action, uh, because this is one of the building blocks of uh, how we actually do this. So let's just uh, go out of that, and let's do a bit of. Um, uh, of that sort of connectivity. So here I've got uh, a program we call AtTalk, and I'm saying uh, my ad is at Colin, and I'm speaking to, uh, so the minus T is to C Comstab. And if I hit enter there, I'll connect to the at Colin ad server, and uh, I want to send messages to C Comstab. And then down here, I'm basically doing exactly the same in reverse. My ad signs uh, at C Comstab, and I want to speak to at Colin. And I'm authenticating with cryptographic keys that are held on this machine. So I could be running this anywhere, it doesn't matter, as long as I've got access to the internet. 
uh, I can um, connect to this at server and then send messages. These messages are end-to-end -end encrypted um, with keys that the at server has, where they could decrypt it at each end. So I can say, you know, I don't know, hello world. And that will get encrypted and then sent over to the other end. And you see it popped up here. And I can say, you know, hello back. So this is a basic principle. We're not sending packets per se. We're sending messages backwards and forwards. And these messages are encrypted and um, sent over to the at sign at the receiving end. So if we go back here, you've basically seen that connectivity um, with at talk, sends message, goes across here, it picks it up, and then display it, you know, decrypts it and displays it. So that's sort of the basic nuts and bolts of how the protocol works. Um, but if you start looking at um, the, if you start looking at the uh, the NIST architecture that I'm sure it's being talked about uh, in your companies, uh, how do you, how do you actually apply the NIST uh, infrastructure? Uh, isn't really well described. How to use it and how to think about uh, the zero trust. Uh, architecture is uh, well thought about, but how to actually implement it, um, not not really so much. Lots of products out there, but hey, how, how, can you, how could you do it at the lowest level of the internet or any IP network? Um, so we started going to think about this. You know, we have a data plane here, send packets, your control plane, and a policy engine. Um, all makes perfect sense, but how could you implement it to solve the fundamental problem of uh, networking, IP networking, which this year, is 50 years old. It's client server. And if you have a client, it speaks to a server. The server may speak to a device. Everything's network encrypted. But you have to have open ports on the server. That's an attack service. And you have to have all the data in the clear because the server has to have stuff, has to have stuff in the clear so we can do stuff with it. How do we fix that using this control plane that we built? So that's effectively what we've done with no ports. Um, we use uh, that messaging, end-to-end -end encrypted messaging, as a control plane. And uh, we can send messages like uh, keys, cryptographic keys. So if I've got a client here and it wants to speak to this Linux machine and uh, I want to have an SSH session up, I can send uh, a notification over to here and say, here's a cryptographic key, maybe a yes key. Um, uh, get ready for a connection. I can speak to a middle box of rendezvous service and say, hey, give me an IP address and two port numbers. And I can connect to one port, authenticate using PKI, and the server can do the same, authenticate using PKI. If we both authenticate, then we can set up this TCP session all the way through here, encrypted with keys that only the server has and only the client has. The rendezvous point never has the crypto with keys. And then we have an encrypted socket. And over the top of that socket, we can do SSH, RDP, in fact, any TCP protocol at all. So that's that's how we manage to shut down all the firewalls. You know, this is outbound to this, uh, these ad servers. And this was all outbound to the rendezvous server, the data plane. Now, what we've also added uh, just recently, and you can see it uh, just at the top here, is uh, a policy engine. So if the Linux machine wants to say, you know, I've got a request from at client, and it's you know this time of the day, um, and who can authenticate or uh, authentic authenticate? Uh, well, everything's end-to-end uh, -end encrypted, including you know this is a signed operation, um, so we know it really is at client. Uh, but uh, who's going to allow it? So we can speak to at policy. And that policy can say, well, given those conditions, I can approve or deny. Um, so that means you don't have to you have a, a hard-coded hard list of ad signs that you allow or disallow. You can actually put that to a policy level. And um, then you can roll out this to your whole enterprise without having to be uh, having to manage individual things. And it also allows you to have a, a, a division of control, maybe infrastructure, sysadmins work at this level. And maybe a business or a customer, or maybe your SISO, uh, decide which ad signs are allowed into which ad signs at what particular time. So that's it. That is uh, um, uh, the um, no ports product um, designed on top of the uh, ad protocol uh, from AdSign. And uh, if you want to try this yourself, 
it's pretty easy. Just go to noports.com. Uh, you can see the uh, see the software. You can get uh, you can try it for free. You can sign up for free, and uh, you can follow our get started guide uh, for SSH. And uh, if you've got any questions or you get stuck, you can always reach out to me. Uh, my email is colin at atsign.com. Thanks for listening.